How do you guys, it's Luke at Luke's Affordable Paint Service and in this video I'm going to talk to you about damage and rubble piles. Right guys, so this is the ruined church that everybody's been asking me to do some rubble pile tutorials on. Um, if anybody wants to know, this is a, a church set from Puppets of War. Um, they sent me it free of charge quite a while ago. Um, the reason I never got around to doing the video when they sent it is it took them an awfully long time for them to send me it. Um, and the reason I've decided to do such a ruined church is because they sent me the bits for a full church and a couple of ruined bits. Um, so I thought, oh, I'll do a complete church. It's a bit of a pig to put together. Uh, it took me and Daryl a good few days trying to get all together and the roof to fit properly and flush. And we just thought, stuff it, let's ruin it. So we've ended up fabricating the roof so it, it comes off and, you know, it, it drops in. We've made it into a cool little kit. Um, I will do a proper review of the kit once I've finished it. It's not the best review as the kit's aimed at, but the what you get for the money is worth it if you're going to do stuff like this with it. Okay, so anyway, it's not about this kit, it's about the ruin piles that people have been asking for. I'll put some pictures up of what people have been asking for, like how I've done it inside. The video is not me working on this, I've put a couple of bits uh, that were left over together and I'm using the techniques on a smaller piece because as you can see this is just ridiculous. This board's like two foot long by a foot and a half wide. Um, so actually filming all this were a pain in the backside so I've scrapped it and I've just done a small piece using the same techniques for you. Alright guys, so we'll get onto that and I'll see you at the end. Right, so these are some of the resin pieces that I've got left over from what they sent me. Um, as you can see, there's a slight kink in it. Now, the reason I ended up with a ruined church in the first place is because I was going to build it solid, um, but with all the bends, I couldn't get it flat. No matter how many hours I put in, I could not build this as it was intended. So I thought, I'm just going to absolutely ruin it. Um, so that's why I ended up ruining the church. Um, but anyway, I'll do a proper review of the church from uh, Puppets of War after this build. But anyway, uh, stick it down to some EPVC. Tip, do not cut the base size out before um, you fit it. And we w we'll do the ruin bits before we cut the base. It's just because you don't know how much space you're going to take up when you start adding the rubble. So just get it stuck down with a bit of super glue uh, and a bit of activator so it grabs it quick. And it's just a matter of chipping and damaging and wrecking whatever you've got down. Whether this is a full building, a corner section like I'm working on for the demo. Um, but just literally cut it with your snips and just make sure you get rid of them clean edges because you don't want any clean uh, like especially if it's perfectly straight just get some roughage to it and get a bit of detail we will be texturing this later as well um, but the more you can do to these little bits it's not hard just chip away till you're happy And just to add, save the little bits, because you will use them as rubble and stuff later. Right, for cutting bigger chunks out, use a razor saw. Now if you haven't got a razor saw in your arsenal, I, I do advise buying one. Um, for cutting resin, as you can see, it's like a knife through butter. I, I didn't buy a razor saw for quite a long time, and then Wayne, the wizard, he advised me on buying a razor saw because they're priceless, and you know what? You were right. If you're working with resin or you're doing any sort of modifying or any sort of customization or anything like that, just look at how easy it cuts through it. You can snap it after you know going halfway down and then just rough it up, and you're making a nice bit. So razor saws are an essential to a terrain builder's tool if you're working with a lot of resins, woods, anything like that. And just anything you break off, just make sure you get rid of them clean edges. And just repeat the process, keep all the rubble, just keep everything. And follow on cutting until you're happy with your damage. I'm now going to take off some uh, bits, because it, with it just being a display corner piece, uh, I'm not going to be bothered too much. So you just cut into it a little bit, get a pull and a snap, um, and just keep them bigger bits because we will use them but again just 
keep cutting till you're happy with the, the finish. Now once you've got all your pieces, just put them together and now we're on to making the rubble piles. Now first off, start off with Sculptor Mold. If you've not seen on how to make Sculptor Mold, check out my video on how to do it. Um, from that video I do make it slightly differently now. I use something called cellulose insulation which is um, just paper pulp bought in a big bag and I mix that with uh, water. But as you can see, it's the perfect, um, what, I don't know what you call it, basic material, uh, modelling compound for filling up all the area easily and quickly and with it being slightly moist it find it's, it doesn't find its level as such but it sort of just falls naturally um, and it's a great way of building up your ground texture I since finding Sculptor Mold I use it for everything um, so it's, it's lightweight, it's heavy duty um, it's awesome <laughs> and this is why you see you don't cut your base till um, you've you've put all your piles down, okay? Because this is where we're going to put the rubble and everything on top of. Uh, but just pile it up. Make sure you have, you know, think about it. Sort of, we're piled up here. There's hardly any building left there. After a couple of minutes, that will be starting to dry, okay? So start sticking all your rubble in. It will hold it, all right? Um, with the plaster and everything, it will just grab it and it'll stick to it. You can add some super glue and bits to it if you wish as well. Um, but it's, it's not that necessary because we're going to be putting a load of other stuff on top of this later. Um, just push it round where you've pressed it in and sort of blend it all in again. Uh, and at this point, if you want to smooth any areas out, smooth it out. You can stick some of the bits on the, the areas that we cut round the top of the, uh, the actual ruin itself and put some... Um, sculptor mold on the damaged bits like here and that gives that more of a rubbly texture and just literally just chuck it on there you don't have to think about it um it, it's quite rough if you don't smooth it out um so it looks pretty good just sticking it on sculptor mold is amazing if you don't want to make it yourself i think it's about 12 pound a bag and that's for a kilo which for the average obvious should last you quite a while if you're doing loads of terrain pieces Now as I'm working with this, it is starting to set um, properly. Um, so wet your hands, smooth it out where you want it smooth. You've got about 10, 15 minutes working time. After that, it starts getting quite awkward unless you have to saturate it again um, to get any sort of movement out of it. But with it being rubble, rough areas and that, we're covering it anyway, so it doesn't overly matter. Now, uh, cut your base out, okay? Because obviously you can see where the rubble piles and everything are. Just follow it. Um, Realistically, I should have left myself a bit more space, but it's only a display and showing the techniques. But just cut round it, and uh, then you're not gonna do so, leave something unnatural. Like you're gonna cut out what you need, and then just bevel it. Uh, this knife is pretty blunt, so it is pretty difficult. Um, but we are fresh blade. Uh, the uh, foam X CPVC cuts very easy. Now I'm going to tell you to do something different to what I'm doing in this video. What I would normally do now is I would paint the church ruins. Um, the thing is, I haven't got any grey tile grout and um, soil mixers. I've run out of grey tile grout, so I wasn't been able to do it. So what I'm actually doing is I'm sticking my brown tile grout down now, and then I'm going to spray it all and paint it all. Um, if you have got grey tile grout, you'd paint the church now, and then you'd go on with your grouts, and then follow on from that point. All right? But if you're going to do it this way, do it this way. Now, tile grout and soil mixed together. Uh, again, the reason I use this is you don't have to paint it. Um, as highlighted prior, I wouldn't be painting it, um, but I'm going to have to do because I don't have it in. I don't have any of the materials in to make it. So all you got to do is just sprinkle that around all the ground areas. Um, don't think about this too much because we're going to be chucking a hell of a lot of rubble and everything else on top of this. But one thing I will highlight about these tile grout mixtures and soil, watch how much I pile up at the side of that uh, broken root, um, gable end there. Um, you can pile it right up 
and then you can uh, spray it with some isopropanol and then spray some watered down PVA over it and because it's tile grout as well it's an adhesive so it firms right up and sets hard so you can even pile this up over things which again piles up naturally it sets hard it's safe for wargaming so there's a lot of great tips just in that alone so now what we're doing is we're spraying that with isopropanol which stops any sort of glue residue from uh, just sitting on top it'll soak in instantly it'll go right down to the base I'm going to be putting this on um, after I've put the rocks on because um, I'm just going to start just chucking rocks all over this um, it would be better if I had some stones and stuff cut to the same sort of style but I ain't got time <laughs> if you really want to do that to copy the the architecture of the building then do that but these are just a couple of different size rocks I'm throwing on um, for a just a standardized wargaming piece you'll get what you want out of it just be selectful on the size if the dot looks a bit too big a bit too out of place just don't use it and just chuck them all over the place and then we can stick all these down with watered down PVA uh, once you've done that okay Right now once you've got all that rubble and everything down, um, just go back to the tile grout. Now this is just to soften up a couple of the, where you've got really big rocks mixing in with the little rocks. Um, it just sort of blends it out and softens it up a bit. Um, you don't have to do this, plus it also adds um, a bit more adhesion, because obviously when you start spraying uh, your watered down glues and things on this, that uh, tile grout starts to bond with the stones and helps it stick. But you don't have to do this step if you don't want to. I'm just doing it because I don't like too, I don't like it too over rocky. Um, because obviously you want to put miniatures and everything on it as well. It sort of flattens a few bits out. Now let's get on to this gluing. I spray it down with water down isopropanol again. Um, and then I'm going to be using the syringe to put this glue on. Make this mixture very strong, all right? quite a thick mixture but look at how that runs with the isopropanol it's already soaked down to the base and just literally bath this in it um, I'd leave it overnight maybe a bit longer um, to, to set but if you want you can use a heat gun because it's a EPVC base or Fomex base whatever you want to call it uh, you can hit this with your heat gun the, the, none of the materials on there are going to get damaged Resin might get a little bit soft, but just don't concentrate on them areas and it'll be fine. Uh, I actually used a heat gun so I could do this video uh, in an evening. Uh, I think it, I think I only spent, what, an hour and a half on this entire build. So having a heat gun, again, it's not something everybody will have, uh, but a heat gun really does speed processes up if you want to knock a lot of things out. But they are about 10, 15 quid. Uh, if it's not something you're going to use regular, then I'm not advising you to buy one, but it it's a very helpful tool if you are doing a lot. Right, well now I'm painting it. I know I said I wouldn't be painting at this stage uh, if I'd have had the right material, but this is how I'm going to. How I would have painted it at that stage. I'd have sprayed the uh, church black, um, and then obviously onto the uh, church uh, with uh, the grey from a distance, so you get the the natural shadow in. Um, and then from above again with a white and this is just all cheap spray cans I think there's about six pounds worth of spray cans here I had to do all three steps <laughs> um, so yeah get that all over and then what we do is we use his own made terrain wash which I'll, it's how to make your own null oil wash and it's just medium um, black ink and uh, plenty of water um, if you need fluoride you can add that as well uh, but once you bath that all over the place, just get uh, like a beigey grey cream. This is a pound tin from a local hardware shop near me. And again, copy that where you'd spray the white. That blends the white in, it lifts up the uh, the wash, and it means you don't actually have to paint it by hand if you don't wish. Uh, and then you get a nice finish. Now all I've done is put some more glue, glue on around the rubble, uh, and I'm just putting the soil. Um, so it blends into the, a table. Uh, th I built this just for the video, but I'm going to take it down to the club. So uh, all the flocking and everything that I do on this is just to blend in with the club's tables. So guys, that's how I do rubble. Um, I'll show you the finished product at the end. And uh, I'll speak to you in a bit. Right, so that's it. 
it's quite it's a very simple process is rubble um again sculptor mold savior um if you're going to use das and fillers then yeah that's great um you can work on them while they're still not set if you want um but you're going to use an awful lot of clay and when using large amounts of das clay i tend to find it cracks uh, even if you do put pva glue in it and stuff still so it can move quite a bit sculptor mold is the bees knees it dries quick you can mold it you can sculpt it you can do all sorts with it and the more you use it the more you'll understand why i keep saying it's awesome <laughs> okay but this is what i managed to do in like an hour and a half um using the bits from what were left over and as you can see I've, I've really damaged it i've really roughed it up i've not even used a paintbrush on this <laughs> this is just spray can so it could look a lot better but i threw it together to show the techniques and how to do the rubber piles and get it looking over you know like over the church and that bits and ruins and that stuff all over and then i've just chucked a couple of flocks on it's for, for my club um so yeah an hour and a half nice little corner piece and all the other bits that i've got left i'll make another couple of bits like this and it's uh, all right for 40k and fantasy and all sorts isn't it do you know what i mean but yeah that's it um it's just a matter of building up your sculptor mold chucking a load of rocks on chucking a load of flock on and uh yeah done and dusted <laughs> all right then guys if you don't know what sculptor mold is i am not sponsored by uh i think it's amco that make it um and they're the only people that i know that make it at the minute if anybody does it that's cheaper let me know i mean i make it myself out of cellulose insulation and and casting powder um but if you want to make it yourself i've got a video on that uh if you want to just buy it if you're just doing the odd terrain piece it's 12 quid and a kilo of that should last you quite a while for doing train pieces like this all right then guys thank you very much all the links below if you want to buy any of my flocks and support my channel and uh, i'll see you again soon in a bit